everything that's about to be said. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 18. On Wednesday night, I asked the adults and the teenagers that were here at the service to look at this passage, and we tried to uh, draw an application from it by looking at the story of Esther. For those of you that weren't here, we look back to the book of Esther, how that Esther had been put in a certain place at a certain time by God for a certain uh, reason, for a specific reason. It was to help spare the lives of her people, the Jews. And we talked about the three things that were done leading up to her going in to talk to the king. First off, we talked about her fasting. And I challenged you to fast, whether that was a food fast or it was a fast from something, uh, maybe it, it would be a fast from a television, or maybe it was a fast from something that you normally do to show God how important it was for you that He blessed this day. And for those of you that did do that the, the past couple of days, I, I thank you and praise the Lord for you. The second thing that we looked at was that she prepared. Remember the Bible said in the book of Esther that she had prepared the meal. And once again, we talked about the fact that as the queen, she uh, we, we may look at it and we may say, well, she was the queen, so did she literally prepare the meal for the king before she went in and made her petition to, uh, to him? The Bible says that it was the meal that she had prepared. Uh, so we looked at it and we talked about the fact that we needed to prepare. There was a lot of preparation that went into today. People handing out flyers, people helping set up, people making things, uh, whether it was for the games or the food or the dessert, the contest. Uh, once again, to each and every person who did something, I thank God for you helping out and being involved in the preparation. And then finally, uh, she brought her petition to the king. And that was prayer. And I asked everyone to be praying that God was blessed. And I believe God did bless today. But once again, I appreciate those of you that made this a matter of prayer. Remember on Wednesday night we talked about the fact that here in Ephesians 2, Paul said we have access to God. We have the ability to go to the throne of grace and to ask God for our requests or our petitions, our supplications, the things that are heavy on our heart. And I told you that when we go and we take our kids to the store, those of us that are parents, and our kids say, Daddy, Mommy, I want that. We, we don't necessarily maybe pay attention every time because a lot of times kids will say they want everything that's in the store. Sometimes... Your, your spouse might want everything that's in the store, too. All right? I'm talking about the, the husbands. The husbands go in and they want everything. We heard Brother Hudson say he wanted to go to the sporting goods and the automotives. Amen? And so the point is, is that when they make that petition, you don't necessarily pay attention the, the first time. But when they ask you over and over and over again, you mark it down mentally and you say, you know what? That's important to them. They want it. And when we bring our requests to God over and over again, much like the widow woman there in Luke chapter 18, God pays attention. And some of you this past week, you took this to the throne of grace and you said, Lord, please bless the day. Please use it in a great and mighty way. And once again to you, I say, thank you. Here in Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 19, Paul goes on now to say, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, and whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. We have been studying this uh, this book, this letter by Paul. Remember he when he finished, he was sitting there in that Roman prison. He had gotten word that the church in Ephesus was growing in their faith. They were abounding in their love towards the other saints and the other believers. But the Holy Spirit impressed it upon his heart to write this letter because there were there was some division in the church. Remember, we talked about the fact that the Jews and the Gentiles were divided. Satan had gotten in there and he had tried to cause division. And remember, we talked about how the, the devil tries to attack the church through opposition or persecution. He tries to use an infiltration as a method. And he also tries division as another uh, source or method to uh, bring down the work of God. And even though the people in this church were growing in their faith, they were abounding in their love, there was some division. They were not united. 
And I challenge our people to be united. Once again, I believe that as some fasted and some prepared and hopefully all of us prayed that we were united in the effort today. Praise the Lord for the good turnout. Praise the Lord for the good spirit. I believe God was in everything that was said and done today. But I look back here to the, the last part of this chapter now. And I see Paul, the, the thought being wrapped up again, is he's trying to unite these people who are divided. He's trying to remind them that they are one. That yes, you came yeah, from different walks of life. You as yeah. Jews may have been brought up uh, obeying the Old Testament commandments and following the Old Testament rituals. Uh, and you Gentiles may have grown up with your families serving false gods and bowing down to idols. But you are now Christians. And no matter what your background is, you are supposed to be united. It's supposed to be one family, one body. And here he says... In verse number 20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building, fitly framed together, groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. We are supposed to be one body that honors and glorifies God. We are, God has brought us to this place because he wants us to be used by him. And he wants us to be used as individuals, but he wants us to be used as a church, as a body of believers, as a whole. I was thinking this last week as we were preparing for uh, the Hudson's to arrive. Uh, I was thinking about how it says in verse 21, the building fitly framed together. And I was going around my home, and I probably can't, I don't know if you've ever done this, but went around and looked at a home and thought to yourself, who built this thing? Because some houses, they're built, and they are I mean, everything's square. Everything's exactly the way it's supposed to be. And I thought my house was that way until this last weekend. And I was painting one of the rooms, the room that Brother Mrs. Hutchinson stayed in. We went and got some blinds, and I thought, man, I'm going to hang these blinds up. And I went, and there was a type of blind where I had the two plastic pieces at the end, and you just slide it into the track. And so I put the one piece up, and I went to put it up, and, and the, uh, the frame of the window, it wasn't actually square. It was rounded. And so I went ahead and I chipped away some of the paint, chipped away some of the, the sheet rock there, and tried to fit it in as best I could. And then I went over to the other side, and I did that. And, of course, I went to put it in, and it wasn't square because the blinds didn't want to go in. And I'm trying to make this plastic bend so I can get it into the track. And praise God I got it in. But the whole time, a job hanging blinds, it should have maybe taken 10, 15 minutes. Took me probably about 45 minutes. I was frustrated. Why? Because something that should have been just right, that should have been square, that should have been fit together the way that uh, it's supposed to be or framed together just right, wasn't. You know, God wants us as a group of believers to be fit together just right. And that's why. Because that is the way that we can bring Him honor and glory. But it all comes back to verse number 20. Who is the cornerstone? Jesus Christ. See, if we are built on Him, then we're going to be fit just right. We are going to be framed just right as believers, as a church. That's why when we talked about the, uh, the beginning of the church, going back in Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter number 16, when Jesus asked Peter, who do men say that I am? And Peter told him, he said, I, or the disciples said, this is who they say you are. They say you're a great prophet. He said, Peter, who do you say that I am? And he said, you're the son of God. And he says, it's upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He said that he wasn't saying, I'm building my church on Peter. I'm building my church on something that's rock solid, on, on a principle. And what was the principle? It was the doctrine that Jesus was, is, and always will be the Son of God, the Savior of the world. Amen. That's the principle he built the church on. And by the way, as long as our lives are built on Jesus and our church is built on Jesus, we will be fitly framed together. But when we get away from Jesus, as Brother Hudson was talking about this morning, walking in truth is really walking in Jesus' footsteps. Yeah. If we get away from Jesus as the cornerstone, then things just aren't going to be right. And guess what? 
the maker, he's going to be looking at our lives and he's going to be saying, these blinds just don't fit. They're supposed to fit just right. And it should just be a 15-minute project, but it's taking 45 minutes. The things that God wants to do in us and in our lives will take you much more time than they really should be because we're being unyielding, because we're being stubborn, because we're saying, this is who I want to be. This is how I want to live. And God's saying, but I'm the creator. I'm the maker. And my son is the chief cornerstone. We need to make sure our lives are built on him. We need to make sure that our church is built on him. As we leave this afternoon, let me encourage you, as I did many weeks ago, to ask yourself the question this week before you do something. And I know, as I said before, it's an old phrase. What would Jesus do? What would the Lord have me to do before you make a decision? When you get up in the morning, what would Jesus want me to do? Let that be the guide for your life that day and this week. Don't try to uh, look too far ahead. Make sure that you focus on, hey, I'm going to walk with God today. Some people, they, they say, you know what, I'm going to walk with God every day this year. And that's a noble goal to make. But how about just focusing on, I'm going to walk with God today. And then when you get to today... Say, I'm going to walk with God tomorrow. And then when you get tomorrow, say, I'm going to walk with God the next day. And take it day by day. And focus your life on Jesus Christ. In the end, he says here in verse number 22, In whom ye also are building together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Don't forget this week, as you're living, a Christian, as a Christian, the Holy Spirit of God is living inside you. You're a habitation for the Holy Spirit of God. Don't grieve Him this week. Don't do things that would be grievous to Him this week. Remember that you are the temple of God. What you watch affects the Holy Spirit inside you. It either honors and glorifies God and it edifies the Holy Spirit or it grieves the Holy Spirit. What you listen to, what you say, what you do, what you partake in, Make sure that you examine all these things according to what would Jesus do. And once again, going back to something we've said over and over again, how do I know what Jesus would do? If I read this book right here, that's going to tell me what Jesus would do. The more time you spend in this book, the more time you spend with God, the more your life will be built on Jesus Christ. And your family will be built on Jesus Christ. And every family in this church is important. Sometimes I think people look and they say, well, if we had to vote today, the most important family in this church would be, and then they give the answer to the pastor in his family, because he's a pastor. Or they might say, well, if we can look at the tithing records, it would probably be the person who give the, gives the most money. But you know what? The truth is that every family, family is equally important in this church. Every member is equally important in this church. As a body, we don't look and say, well, man, I, I would rather have my hands over my feet. We say, no, I would rather have my hands and my feet. You know what? God needs his hands, his feet, his legs, his arms. He needs his body to be working together. This week, I want to challenge you. Make sure that you're building your life on Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you for all you dealt for us. Thank you for all you give it to us. Lord, I pray that you'd help us as we dismiss here. In just a moment, Father, I pray that you would honor and glorify everything that we do this afternoon. And once again, thank you for all the hard work that has gone into today. Thank you for the faithfulness of these folks staying at this time. Lord, I just pray that you bless them this afternoon and this week. Father, help them to take to heart all that we've read and studied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.